Hi friends, I won't bore you with a long introduction so let's get straight to the point. The task is to assemble a capacious traction battery for a children's electric car. The car is powerful and heavy and has an impressive load capacity of 100 kilograms. An original 12 volt lead battery with a capacity of 10 amps hour is enough for 20 to 30 minutes of driving. In fact, this battery is 6 amps hour despite the declared 10. It was decided to create a capacious lithium battery that will allow the car to cover long distances even if an adult rides with a child. Yes, in the car an adult also can sit quite comfortable. Looking ahead, I will say that the new battery will last for 4 hours of driving, taking into account the maximum speed of 15 km per hour that the machine can develop on a single charge you can drive an average of 50 to 60 km which is very very cool for a toy car. We will talk about how I made this battery during this video but before that I'll advise my video about lithium batteries. There I explain how to prepare it correctly, what are the main parameters, how to charge and discharge, in general everything you need to know about such batteries. Our battery is assembled from used cans from old laptops. Such an assembly works quite well if you know what to do. Used cans are several times cheaper than new ones and most importantly laptop batteries usually use original cans from top manufacturers. At first, all batteries are disassembled, the banks are freed from nickel tapes. Then the voltage on them is measured and all this is sent for charging. Those banks whose voltage is less than 2.5 volts are charged separately, with a current of 200 to 500 milliamps, and those with 3 volts and above are charged with a current of 1 amp on a large homemade charger that can charge 20 cells simultaneously. Further, all banks are discharged with a stable current of 1 ampere to a voltage of 3 volts to detect capacity. Those banks that were heated during charging or discharging are set aside separately with marks. They go through additional cycles with smaller currents. If nothing changes, they will send to recycle. The discharging is the longest process. At the moment I am discharging with a professional high precision electronic load. I have other dischargers, but the load is more accurate. After the discharge, the given capacity is recorded on the banks. Also, using a special milliometer, the internal resistance of each them is measured and signed. This is the most important parameter and for quite a long time I have been sorting banks based on internal resistance. On average, this parameter for used cans from laptop ranges from 50 to 90 milliohms. The lower the internal resistance, the better, i.e. more charge and discharge currents of banks, less heating during operation. In this assembly, only cans with internal resistance of 50 to 65 milliohms will be used, although it is better to make the spread no more than 5 milliohms. The average capacity of the cans that will go into the battery ranges from 1500 to 2400 milliamps hour. Although I have few of the latter, basically the cans will be from 1700 to 2000 milliamps hour. Next, you need to remove the remnants after tearing off the nickel tapes. These are the places of welding. We remove them with a grinder. Short commercial break. This issue is sponsored by the Chinese company GLCPCB, which is specialized in the production of high quality printed circuit boards for your projects at the most affordable prices. The company's production capabilities are enough to fulfill the most complex orders, from simple single-sided boards to complex multi-layer boards. There is a large selection of solder masks and other options. The company is also involved in industrial 3D printing, SMD soldering stencils and board assembly. The quality of work performed at the highest level tested repeatedly. You will find a link to the GLC website in the description. Next, I remove old heat shrink which is usually damaged during disassembly, and put a new one. Heat shrink is bought in China, it is inexpensive although you can leave your own. Next, we need these things, these are insulators that will glue to the positive terminal of the can. It is imperative to install this insulation, especially if you are going to weld cans with nickel tape in the future. 
These things are also not expensive, they also are bought on AliExpress. Next, heat up the soldering dryer and gently, but with quick movements, seat the heat shrink. It is important here not to yawn, otherwise the heat shrink will melt. If you lower the temperature of the dryer, in some places the heat shrink will not fit properly. I'm too lazy to put so many shrinks, so the client who ordered this battery decided to help. All banks are ready. Before sorting them, let's take care of other parts of the battery. Our battery is unusual and advanced, so at the last moment I decided to abandon the welding of cans and use holders. You can order them from China, but my time was limited and 48 good holders cost a lot of money. Besides, I have a 3D printer, so I found a model, printed three pieces and began to think how to proceed. Why holders? The fact is that unlike welding, a battery with holders can be easily serviced, checked and changed individual cells without completely disassembling the battery. But of course, with holders the battery will be more expensive and larger, and there will also be more losses. In addition, to the convenience of maintenance, our battery will be safe, with separate fuses for each cell. You need to make contacts to the holders, and at first I wanted to make them from a spring, but then a better idea came to my mind. I took a nickel strip, 0.2 thick, cut of 35mm, marked it, bent in a U-shape, and here it is a contact. Next, I took a silicone heat resistance mat for soldering, cut off the squares according to the width of the nickel tape, and glued them with the help of B7000 glue as shown. Next, the contacts are inserted into the corresponding grooves that are on the model, bent and that's all. Then I soldered all these points. I connected the negative points together with the nickel tape, the positive ones aren't connected anywhere yet. Such a holder holds the cans very tightly, it will never fall out by itself, but in fairness I note that the cans is installed and removed with great effort and with the help of something like a screwdriver. The rubber bands provide a very good clamp, and the finished holder looks just like the factory one. Cell sorting. We have a 3S16P battery, that is, we have three assemblies, each of which has 16 cans connected in parallel to increase the total capacity and current output. These assemblies are then connected in series to increase the overall voltage of the battery. In each assembly we should get approximately the same total capacitance and internal resistance. Now, important note. In the assembly the parallel connections of cans with a large variation in internal resistance is unacceptable. It is also desirable to select a capacitance with a minimum variation. That's it because of all this fuss with the correct sorting many people prefer to use new banks and not bother. It's right but the difference in cost is huge. For sorting, you can use the specified site. You just need to specify the battery configuration and cell capacity, the rest will be done automatically. I counted my battery several times and as a result now it has the following parameters. After sorting, we install the banks in holders. Be careful not to reverse the polarity. Next, I cut a thin fiberglass and glued it in the middle of the positive terminals of the cans along the entire length of the assembly. After that, I took a nickel strip 0.2mm thick and 10mm wide, bent as shown, tint and glued over fiberglass. This is power plus bus. Then I took a wire without varnish insulation with a diameter of 0.1 to 0.12mm and soldered it as shown. This wire is chosen so that it burns at a current of 5 amps, so it works as a fuse. Each bank is equipped with such a fuse. This is done with all three assemblies. Now, it remains only to connect all the banks in series and install the protection board. I made all power connections with double 16 AWG wire, this is a stranded, very flexible wire in silicone heat-resistant insulation. A neutral sealant was used to join the assemblies. I have the most common protection board for 40 amps 3S. 
It has a built-in balancing circuit, but in the end this part will probably be removed. I intend to assemble a special charger for this battery, which will have three separate charge channels with a stable current and voltage, and the balancer will not be needed at all, or I will put an active balancer. But this will become clear later. I forgot to point out that the assemblies are isolated from each other with thin fiberglass. Well, just in case everything is wrapped with tape except for the upper part, there is plexiglass there for the convenience of monitoring the status of the fuses. It's a pity I didn't have transparent plexiglass at hand, so I installed other for a while. Then, the 13-hour printing of the case for the battery began. A 3D printer is a cool thing. I remember the times when I cut out such things manually and as a rule I was never satisfied with the result. Now I press the button and can go about my business. As a result, such a case came out, the dimensions just in case with the margin. In the meantime, all assemblies went through the process of charging and discharging to determine the capacity and safe current output. Before assembling the battery, all three cells were charged to 4.2 volts. All was installed, connected and only the most important thing remained a nameplate with a full battery characteristics. Such a battery has many advantages compared to conventional assemblies where all the banks are welded. Firstly, we have additional protection with fuse. Secondly, I can take out, maintain or replace individual cells without completely disassembling the battery. Thirdly, after the battery gets old and needs to be replaced, it is enough just to replace the cells. Nothing need to solder, weld and so on. It's convenient. Of course, such a battery has more losses compared to the classical one, because here the battery contacts are simply pressed, not welded. But this doesn't mean that this method is much worse. In real conditions, the difference will not be noticeable. Someone will say that such cells are unsafe, but this isn't entirely true. They are often used both in portable electronics and in serious electric cars. You know this very well. But in general, no chemical current source is safe and energy in any form isn't safe. Yes, a safe battery may not ignite, but damage will cause self-heating, acrid smoke, melting of conductors and fire. In this case, the battery is located under the capote and is safe as possible. There really is no thermal protection here, but I'll fix it somehow. What can I say about the results? Battery above 28 amps hours, of course, you need to charge such a battery much less often than its own. In urban conditions, the car traveled 55 kilometers on one charge before the protection board was turned off. This is a fantastic for a children electric car. The battery is light, safe enough, the only problem is the stuffing of the car itself. Often during long climbs the thermal fuse is activated. The battery is powerful and gives out large currents without drawdown, but the wiring of the car, relays and everything else can hardly cope with this. So soon I'll throw everything out here and do it on my own way. I personally like the battery. What to hide, I myself like to ride this car with children and it copes with such a task. In fact, the assembly of this battery lasted a couple of months, because I didn't buy the batteries at once, but in parts. Then was a long test at the end of the assembly. But I am satisfied, the children apparently too. Please don't forget to rate this video, you will find links to my other resources in the description. It's all for today, now I say goodbye until we meet again. With you, as always, was Kassian TV.